The embarrassing moment you just witnessed was carried out by the Queen's Guard of Windsor Castle in England. Following a little miscommunication and confusion, the guards' attempts to be super serious are turned into pure comedy gold by the bewildered spinning of these fellows and these guys' humiliated reactions. All finished off with an uncomfortable shuffle at the end. Pretty embarrassing, right? Well, if it's embarrassing moments you're seeking, you've come to the right place. The clips and pics coming up in this video will have you rolling around with laughter and shriveling up with cringe-induced embarrassment in equal measures, from the world's worst magician to some serious public slip-ups from celebrities and normal folks alike. Let's check out some of the most embarrassing situations the world has ever seen. Caught in the Act People who sleepwalk often find themselves in all sorts of strange situations. But attempting a burglary isn't usually one of them. Even so, one man from Garden Grove, California thought sleepwalking would be a believable excuse as to why he was found sneaking around on someone else's property in 2018. You climb over? Yeah. Are you recording me? You trying to break into my house? No, I was sleepwalking. Sleepwalking? Yeah. While you have to commend the guy's creativity for thinking on his feet, his Oscar-worthy performance isn't quite enough to convince the homeowner of his innocence. What was you trying to break in my house for? Who said I was? All right, see you later. How many more guys you have? Huh? Wait, what? You climb over. I don't know how I even got here. What's more, he then tries to turn the tables on the owner, threatening to sue him. Are you recording me? Of course. Oh, if, you, if you do record me and I see you on Facebook, I'm gonna sue you guys. Now, I'm no lawyer, but I'm pretty sure breaking into someone's home overrules an attempt to sue someone for videoing without permission. Regardless, the world's worst liar continues with the performance of the year. How did you get in? I don't even know. When he finally takes the hint to leave, his parting statement doesn't exactly help his case. What are you talking about? All right, see you guys later. Oh. Oh, sorry, I broke into your house. I'm just kidding, I didn't break into your house. I don't know how I even got in uh, Hi, I have someone that's climbing. Haha, <laughs> sorry I broke into your house, which I totally didn't, by the way. I don't know about you guys, but I'm completely convinced. The Great Paul Norris Humanity has seen some spectacular magicians over the years. Harry Houdini, Penn and Teller, David Blaine, to name but a few. But most people have never heard of the Great Paul Norris. Why haven't people heard of him? Well, why don't you take a look at Paul's first and only live TV appearance roughly 30 years ago on Sky Star Search and see for yourself. We'll start with his big opener, a couple of rope tricks which start off promising despite some fidgeting and a few fumbled words. Now I'm gonna show you a trick out of the disappearing knot out of Houdini's rope. Thank you. Now Houdini will, I will make the, the rope stand on end. Thank you. Having a little trouble finding your pocket there, Paul? Things begin to go downhill with Paul's disappearing cigarette trick, where his fumbling fingers distract from whatever it is he's trying to do. Oh, now I'll get out a pack of cigarettes. Excuse me a minute while I get in trouble here. Here we are. One cigarette, I will place a cigarette inside. <laughs> and 
And here we are, disappearing cigarette. The judges appear just as confused as you probably are. Sorry, Paul, but it's a little hard to be impressed when your audience has no idea what's going on. Up next comes arguably Paul's best trick. One Visa card. I'd make it change into a five pound note. While it's an improvement, if you look closely, you can see the outline of the Visa card tucked inside the fake note when he folds it back up. Clearly, sleight of hand is not Paul's strong suit, which is unfortunate for a magician. His clumsy handwork makes watching his grand finale as painful as being sold in half for real. Now for my last trick, I like to make a 10 pound note disappear and return again. As you see, one piece of card, We'll place the 10 pound note inside. Oh well, there you go. <laughs> Thank you very much. Good night, boys. Thank you very much. Did you catch that? The 10 pound note falls out of his trick piece of card onto the floor. Now we all get a little nervous from time to time, but you think Paul might have practiced those nerves away a little more before coming on live television. If Paul had worked his awkwardness into the act, it could have even been a pretty funny show. But he didn't, and in the end, it was funny for all the wrong reasons. Adele Dezim. A slip of the tongue can be an extremely embarrassing thing. Just ask John Travolta. Back in 2014, Travolta appeared at the Oscars to introduce Adina Menzel, singer of the mega-hit single Let It Go from Disney's Frozen. But when it came time to say her name, Travolta said this instead. Please welcome the wickedly talented one and only Adele Dazim. The Adele Dazim mess-up spawned countless memes and creative takes on the situation, as you might expect. Please welcome the wickedly talented one and only. So how did the star of Grease mess up so badly? Well, he claims that while he did already know Menzel's name before the incident, the teleprompter he was reading from had her name spelled phonetically to try and avoid mispronunciation. Unfortunately, the phonetic spelling of Adin A Menzel only served to confuse Travolta, resulting in the opposite effect to what was intended the wickedly talented one and only Adele Dazim. Speechless at the interview. At some point or other, most people experience a bad job interview, but I guarantee you even your very worst doesn't hold a candle to this guy's disastrous Skype interview. It was his own fault though, because instead of learning the skills required for the job, he got a buddy to say his answers for him all while attempting poorly to lip sync to the answers. Check it out. I'm going to be converting into the technical aspect of technical design. And in some cases I am working on it, I'm speaking to the team members who are reporting to me. Things totally fall apart when the audio signal the interviewee's basing his lip movements on drops from his headphones, leaving him unable to sync up his mouth. Yes, I'm, well, I mean, I'm used but using the trigger, so I'm just analyzing. The interviewer spots the blunder immediately. Hold on, hold on. Uh, I think uh, it's not you who is speaking. I mean, uh, uh, someone is speaking, uh, someone else is speaking here and you're just lip syncing. I, I can also hear your voice, uh, the candidate who is sitting right in front of me. And if you ever wondered what it looks like when someone dies inside, look no further than this swindler's face once he realizes he's been caught out. Priceless. While we're on the topic, what's the most embarrassing job interview you've ever had? Let me know in the comments section below. And while you're down there, why not hit those like and subscribe buttons for more hilarious content like this. I upload new fact and true story based videos daily, so do your brain and your funny bone a favor and subscribe for more. Boom goes the dynamite. Way back in 2005, Brian Collins made his first on-camera appearance on Ball State University's student newscast. Hello everyone. Well, the Ball State softball team continued to play this weekend and they were hoping to continue off of their straight three out of four losses. And so we'll take a look and see how that happened. After a relatively strong start, a series of fumbled pronunciations soon see all the momentum snap from the newscast. 
Iowa tournament starting this Friday. Before the Ball State baseball team kicks off its conference season this, we this weekend, the Cards will battle an in in-state rival Indiana tomorrow. Tomorrow's game will be the meeting between the two, beating both first. <sighs> Before long, Brian's presenting confidence has completely disintegrated, and after a lengthy silence, his words seem to stop making sense entirely. Hoosiers are on the four on on the year, and they have won six of its last seven games tomorrow. Will be the game three at 3 p.m. Eventually, Brian seems to just want it to be over, but he's forced to press on. It seems every week they have a player Mad Lawrence is the latest Cardinals tennis player to win the award. Lamar won all, this, all the singles and doubles matches last week. So far, the Cardinals have had a player honored on the, on the weekly awards. Things pick up for a while until it comes time to commentate over clips of a recent basketball game. <sighs> Reggie Miller's looking good. He shoots a three, and it's good. During his commentating, Brian drops his now famous catchphrase, which, if you ask me, totally redeems his other shortcomings. Later he gets the rebound, passes it to the man, shoots it, and boom goes the dynamite. The real dynamite, however, comes when Brian tries to read the names of new recruits to the college basketball team. Kicking it off, he doesn't even get the name of the sport right. The Associated Press of the All-American First Team in College ba Baseball was announced today at Utah's seven-foot sophomore center Andrew Bogat was the leading vote getting receiving 61st place votes. Bogat, who is an Australian native, received very little attention in the presentation in the preseason, but averaged 20 points and 12 rebounds a game for Utah. The four other players joining Bogat on the AP team are senior forward Wayne Summers and Kansas of Kansas and Hacken Warwick of Syracuse, junior guard J.J. Reddick of Duke, and sophomore, and sophomore guard Chris Paul of Wake Forest rebounded out the list. As it all wraps up, Brian's shame is impossible to ignore. Okay, great. Thanks a lot for that look in sports, Brian. Yeah. And when we come back, we'll have one final look at weather. Stay tuned. The broadcast may have been a cringe-inducing disaster, but it was all worth it for birthing this timeless catchphrase. And boom goes the dynamite. Please stop singing. Messing up on a broadcast while speaking is bad enough, but butchering a cover of a classic Broadway song on camera is a whole other kettle of cringe. That's exactly what Naomi Shore did when she attempted to sing And I'm Telling You I'm Not Going from Dreamgirls at the 2010 Miss Arkansas Beauty Pageant. Here's her big moment for your viewing and listening displeasure. For that big finish, Shore seemed to try to hit every possible note in the scale, and somehow missed them all. I'd be willing to bet the applause at the end isn't so much congratulations as it is gratitude that it's finally over. You really can't fault her passion, but sometimes you really have to recognize your own limitations. Or at the very least, practice a little more. Busted at the Beach when people get caught doing things they know they shouldn't be doing, there's usually one of two reactions. Either they admit their wrongdoings and apologize, or they deny everything, sometimes becoming a little aggressive in the process. Two Florida women fell into the latter category back in 2014 when they were caught on camera trying to steal someone else's beach equipment. At first, they try playing dumb. Is that yours? Oh, yeah, but we don't know how to do it. Oh, you need some help? Yeah, this is our stuff. Then when it becomes clear they've been rumbled, their demeanor changes from innocent to aggressive. You know what, I will, and then I'm gonna take that camera and put it in the grass so you don't like that. 
step back. Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> Seriously? Sadly, the clip ends there just as things are getting juicy. However, it was later revealed that the situation de-escalated without a serious confrontation. That said, things got even more embarrassing in the days that followed. News outlets picked up the story and the beach bandits attempted to sue Fox News for portraying them as thieves. The solution is pretty simple. If you don't wanna be seen as a thief, maybe consider not stealing other people's stuff? Popping the question. If you ever wanna to propose to someone, there's one golden rule you should always follow. Seeing as it's such a major decision, you really should make it 100% certain that your significant other will say yes before you officially pop the question, especially in public. But like other unfortunate souls lacking the foresight to unofficially double check before popping the question, one Brazilian man dove right into a lavish surprise proposal in 2017. The results were not pretty. At least the violinist sticks around to give the proposer his money's worth, even if it does make things considerably more depressing. It gets even more awkward when the surrounding public begins to applaud. Either the mall goers misunderstood the outcome of the proposal or were just offering some support. Either way, it ultimately only makes the situation more tragic and the husband not-to-be walks off in shame. A similar situation was seen on the British breakfast show GMTV back in 2008. For some reason, an English woman decided national television would be the perfect platform through which to propose to her partner Mario. While, well, spoiler alert, the situation ended in a yes, her fiancé's dry reaction made the whole affair almost as embarrassing as if the answer had been a no. Mario, I've been with you for seven years. You're the best thing that's happened to me in the past seven years, and I've asked you along here today and some of your work colleagues to ask if you will marry me. <laughs> the words, yeah, go on, probably wasn't the ecstatic acceptance the soon-to-be bride had in mind, but Mario's indifference continues. How are you feeling right at this moment? Um, well, I'm fine. A uh, bit of a shock, really. Uh, he's, uh, he's a little bugger, she Whether his seeming indifference was a sign of bruised masculinity or whether he was just too polite to say no on TV remains unknown. All we know for sure is that it was incredibly painful to watch. Slip of the tongue. In politics, misspeaking can be a costly error to make. Back in 2008, while attempting to voice his disagreement with rival Barack Obama, the late John McCain suffered a serious slip of the tongue. The error and the attempt to cover his mistake that followed was pure comedy gold. Senator Obama's supporters have been saying some pretty nasty things about Western Pennsylvania lately. And you know, I couldn't agree with them more. I couldn't disagree with you. I couldn't agree with you more than the fact that Western Pennsylvania is the most patriotic, most uh, God-loving, most, most patriotic part of America. And this is a great part of the country. He saves himself at the last second by following the standard political rule book of addressing an American audience. If all else fails, bring out the patriotism. But thanks to the video footage, his hilarious initial slip up will never be forgotten. Trump meets Tim Apple. The politicians of 2020 are far from immune from the occasional embarrassing moment. Just look at Trump. No, I'm not commenting on his policies. I'll leave that to you guys in the comments. I'm talking about a hilarious moment that occurred in 2019 during a meeting involving Apple CEO, Tim Cook. Trump made a slight error pronouncing Tim Cook's name. See if you can catch it. 
got to start doing it over here. And you really have. I mean, you've really uh, put a big investment in our country. We appreciate it very much, Tim Apple. It seems like a mistake, but maybe we've got it wrong. Maybe this is how Trump refers to all major businessmen. You know, like Elon Tesla, Jeff Amazon, and Bill Microsoft. I guess we'll never know for sure what Donald Whitehouse really meant when he said, Tim Apple. Royal pickings. It's not just politicians and civilians that exhibit embarrassing behavior. The royals do it too. In fact, being in the public eye so much, a number of members of the British royal family have been caught in the same compromising pose, picking their noses. There are countless snaps online of the queen picking away, but other royal nose diggers include the Duke of Kent, Prince William, and even Prince Charles. Looks like the servants need to up their game and remember to bring the royal Kleenex next time. A man of principle. In 2017, a truly cringeworthy exchange took place during a CNN debate on the topic of free speech rights for journalists working for large news corporations. In this segment, hosted by Brooke Baldwin and featuring former ESPN senior editor Keith Reed and Clay Travis of Fox Sports Radio, Travis makes a comment that leaves his opponent speechless. I think that's a bad move. I'm a First Amendment absolutist. I believe in only two things completely, the First Amendment and boobs. Granted, you can't deny those parts of a woman do indeed exist, so Travis isn't technically incorrect to believe in them. But there's a time and a place to discuss their existence, and a serious pre-watershed debate over free speech probably isn't it. But while the comment is embarrassing in itself, the refusal of the other participants to move past it only amps up the embarrassment, and it winds up derailing the entire segment. That they were Wait, not did going you just to say allow a you believe in the First Amendment and related commentary to be able to comment on sports because of, because of her gender. For so for somebody to come on CNN. And to say something like the only thing I believe in in a discussion I'm about just, something, I'm still there too, and I just want to make sure it, I'm hearing I, you correctly. B o o z e or b o o b s. Yeah. Listen, listen, Brooke. I, I, I think that speaks for itself. I, I, I love the First Amendment as, as well. Uh, I also love women, and I and and, and as <laughs> you don't love boobs loves, too. Who, who, in the end, the ridiculousness of the whole situation proves too much, and the host ends the segment. Brought up in this I'm done. This is done. This is conversation it. over. Yanking mics. Uh, bye. See ya. Now that's what I call quality broadcasting. But do you think Travis's comment should have just been brushed over in favor of continuing the segment? Or do you think making that kind of inappropriate comment should mean forfeiting your right to speak on air? Let me know in the comments down below. Horrendous haircuts. There are few quicker routes to painful embarrassment than receiving a bad haircut. Like this guy, who showed his barber a screenshot from a paused video on his phone as a reference. Mistaking the screenshot's play button for an intentional feature, the barber went ahead and shaved his customer a play button of his own as part of the cut. Or this Reddit user, whose barber took a request for a short back and sides to the extreme in the form of a very close shave. Then there's the Las Vegas Raiders owner Mark Davis, who's reportedly had the same awful cut since he left college. Unbelievably, Davis travels all the way from Vegas to Palm Desert for his tram, which he refuses to change despite constant mockery online. Jim Carrey as Lloyd Christmas in Dumb and Dumber isn't usually considered a fashion icon, but clearly he is to Mark Davis. But there are some haircuts that start off fashionable and age like milk like what's now become known as the Karen cut. If you're not familiar with the term, a Karen is a type of woman who can usually be summed up by the phrase, I'd like to speak to the manager, often found causing a fuss in stores, being outrageously rude to service staff in restaurants, and generally going through life with a sense of entitlement. Karens have become a very popular meme in the past few years. And unfortunately for the many women with this type of bob haircut, which was popular in the mid 2000s, their trim has become closely associated with the Karen lifestyle. The only people who've suffered more judgment than all the nice women out there with the Karen cut are all the nice women with the name Karen. Sorry, Karens. If you need to speak to the manager, just let me know. Dance like nobody's watching. In January 2020, this young woman was snapped by a very entertained onlooker in Washington, dancing her heart away in her car.
Recording a TikTok, it's not long before she realizes she's being watched. When she does, her embarrassment is so strong, you can't help dying inside just a little bit along with her. The worst part though is that while the girl presumably hoped the moment would only be shared between herself and the woman filming, it's now been seen by millions of people online. And for my part, the video you're currently watching probably isn't going to help keep it under wraps. But what can I say? It's my job to share these spectacularly embarrassing moments with all of you beautiful people. I have no regrets. The Russian Dating Experience I'd now like to introduce you to the wild and wacky world of Russian dating websites. The profile pictures found on these sites are quite unlike any you'll see on Tinder, Hinge, or Bumble in the Western dating world. These pics are so spectacularly Russian that you can almost smell the vodka. You've got this guy whose wall carpets only serve to paint the full Soviet picture alongside his ultra macho pose and interesting haircut. I can only ever aspire to be this manly. And as for this fellow, well, what can I say? The USA will never know this level of class. Then you have the women of these sites. This lady shows how much of a suitable girlfriend she'll make by posing with her catch of the day. These delightful devushkas, meanwhile, show that you don't need a red carpet or modern sports car to be glamorous. Russian dating site profile pictures are a wonderfully weird rabbit hole to dive into. That is, if you ever want your eyebrows to be raised beyond the top of your head. Unable to hold it. Back in 2007, pop star Fergie had a little accident while performing a Black Eyed Peas concert. Midway through the set, audience members spotted an unexpected change in the coloration of her pants. It soon became obvious that the singer had peed herself on stage, unable to hold it until the end of the set. When later asked about the unfortunate mishap, Fergie confirmed that it was exactly what it looked like. She did, however, qualify her confirmation by saying that she'd been running late and didn't have time for a toilet break pre-show. You have to commend the fact that she bounced back from the incident, considering peeing yourself in front of a big crowd is many people's worst fear. But when you gotta go, you gotta go. Zuckerberg Sunscreen Mark Zuckerberg, co-founder and CEO of Facebook, is a little strange. From his oddly robotic movements, Although not unprecedented, this is a unique period. The issues... To the strange way he drinks water, his strange behavior has led to many tongue-in-cheek theories that he may be an alien or an android. Pictures snapped of him in July 2020 didn't help get rid of those theories as they showed his face coated in an exorbitant amount of sunscreen far beyond the necessary amount. So either he can't grasp how to rub it in, or his skin is super sensitive because his home planet gets less light than Earth. Or as some have theorized, this is what his actual face looks like after he's removed his fake human mask. Either way, this image is guaranteed to be in your nightmares tonight. And for that, I apologize. Baskin in the Club 2019 and 2020 were a strange couple of years for Carol Baskin, owner of Big Cat Rescue in Florida. For those not already aware, Baskin gained significant fame in 2020 following the release of the Netflix series Tiger King, which documents her rivalry with fellow Tiger owner Joe Exotic. In the wake of her newly increased fame, Carol joined Cameo, a site where fans can pay for personalized videos. Some of the results were incredibly uncomfortable. In a moment of peak cringe, Baskin and her husband could be seen singing their own cleaned up version of 50 Cent's Into Club. Take a look, if you dare. Go Charlotte, it's your birthday. We're gonna party like it's your birthday. We're gonna sit Bacardi like it's your birthday. And you know we don't give a fudge that it's your birthday. It's like when a school teacher tries to be cool, only much, much worse. But that's not even as bad as these videos requests got. Baskin published an even more unfortunate video after a fan jokingly requested a shout out for a couple of ex-BBC celebrities who were found guilty of horrendous crimes involving kids. Hi, Rolf Harris. 
all your kids wanted to get together and tell you that you have really touched them and that they love all that you have done for them. I hear there's a lot of great stories about you and your best friend, Jimmy Seville. Can't wait to hear those. Happy birthday, Rolf. Totally unaware of the sinister implications of the name she's saying, Carol appears free from embarrassment. But anyone in the know watching certainly feels the embarrassment on her behalf. I need a shower after that. Shady Santa For children all around the world, Old St. Nick is a symbol of innocent, festive joy. But unfortunately, some mall Santas just give off a creepy vibe, and occasionally kids' reactions to this are caught on camera. I think I'd probably feel the same way as the girl on the right side here if I were in her shoes. And with the facial expression of this Santa, I'm not surprised this youngin looks terrified. But other mall Santas have been caught over the years in embarrassing situations of a different kind, exhibiting less than innocent intentions. Like this Santa captured taking a cheeky peek at a girl who's presumably telling him what she wants for Christmas. Looks like Santa's got a few festive desires of his own. Ugh. Looks like this year, it's Saint Nick who's going on the naughty list. Mic check. It's always embarrassing to find out a singer is lip singing. It's a lot worse though when it's revealed in a moment of spectacular failure like the one that occurred at China's Lantern Festival broadcast in 2016. After the intro to her song, Sa Ding Ding raised her mic to begin singing when this happened. Yep, you saw that right. Ding Ding wasn't just caught out lip syncing, she was holding the microphone the wrong way around. She continued the performance all the same, but it was too late. Everyone saw her blunder, and a vocalist singing into the wrong end of a microphone is not something a crowd, or indeed the internet, ever forgets. What's the most embarrassing moment you've ever witnessed? Let me know in the comments section down below. Thanks for watching.